What is up folks? Welcome to Boosted Motorsports. Today, again, we're gonna be working on the Dodge Dakota RT 5.9 liter Magnum engine. And we are continuing to work on this supercharged project truck. So on the last video, we installed the intercooler. This video, we're gonna be installing the piping that connects to that intercooler. So if you haven't checked out the last video, check it out, get up to speed. We have a lot of videos on this build. Let's get into today's video. Okay, so super quick, all of this stuff that you see on the ground here, this is what we removed on last video. So you guys haven't missed anything if you guys saw that video. And all I did between that video and now is I just had to come up with some spacers for now. So right now I just use some simple washers to kind of build up the distance from there. We could get fancy and you know try to take some aluminum spacers and drill them and chop them to the exact size, but this is working perfectly fine. You can't tell whatever. Um, as far as stuff that we have to take care of just before we start doing the new piping, I haven't taken off the rest of these lines and this canister back here. So I'm gonna work on getting that out so that we have our room here because we're gonna be putting the coupling in here and right now the factory AC line is just kind of chilling there in our way so I'm gonna do that and then this is gonna get interesting over here I'm hoping and the game plan is to be able to just fit through here so that we can go underneath the battery box or tray and come up through here but we're gonna find out in today's video but this came out nice I got a couple washers on there that you guys um, you know didn't see on the last video so couple washers there it's now free floating it's good it's solid and let's get into uh, get into this thing so we'll take off these AC lines and we'll get cracking on the piping well that thing was no fun getting out but we got the canister out of there now let's get this last line out I don't know how far I'm gonna go with this you guys so there's a clip it's kind of like a safety clip but then you still need to undo the inside but I'm just kind of having a internal debate with myself here on how much we should actually remove at some point because I mean we have all these lines that go into this into the actual cab and some of these lines are different size so they're not all one size on these little tools disconnect tool but um, yeah I'm just wondering how much of this stuff because obviously there's still more AC components under the hood but just you know how far to take it as far as gutting this one came out, came out nice for once so we'll leave it disconnected here, the two lines that go inside the cab. But um, yeah, all this stuff, you now I just gotta figure out how to get this line out of here without removing our supercharger, but we should have most of the lineage out that we wanted. One other thing too is the compressor. We're gonna take the compressor off, but I'm just still waiting for the belt that's shorter to come in the mail. And then once that shows up, then I can just run it across and we can eliminate the compressor. But for now, I'm just leaving the compressor in place since that's the belt that's tight on there right now, regardless, even though we have no AC. So this line's loose. Let's figure out how to get it out without wrecking it. Okay, so here's where we're at. I removed just this kind of piping here so we get the lines out. So everything is out of here now. And looking at this, because this motor was not the original motor that was in this, it actually, I showed you guys a long time ago, it has an LKQ stamp on the side of the block. And if you guys aren't familiar with LKQ, they're like one of the largest recyclers in the world. So this motor came out of something else. So. I think that's a good thing. I think it's probably lower mileage than the actual chassis. But I think when they did the swap, they didn't route this properly because I've cut and got this big snake thing here coming from our PCM. I think it's supposed to route behind the washer bottle closer to the firewall. So that would explain this extra loop. One other thing I didn't show you guys, but I'll just mention it quickly now, is we managed to move the PCM to give us enough room here. I think there's some sort of bracket that normally would come with you know, this kit, but we didn't have it. And all I did was just move the one bolt into an existing hole that was for that bracket. I don't know where the heck the bracket is at the moment, but anyways, you just have to trust me. There's a black bracket that this bolted to, and we ended up removing it and just putting it straight onto the side there. And it gave us more room because normally this would be sitting about here. So um, that's that part of it. What I am gonna do now is we will uh, put the truck on the lift 
That way I can go underneath and get all the piping off. We're gonna take off that Procharger intercooler that's on the bottom. If you haven't seen that, don't worry. I'll show you what is on there and comes with the kit. And then that'll kind of explain why we're upgrading it to this front mount. So anyways, let's get the truck on the lift and continue. Okay, so truck is up and we're gonna just remove all of the intercooler piping that comes standard with the Procharger kit. So you can see we have the bottom mount intercooler right there, this little girl here. So this is gonna come off, but first I'm just gonna disassemble or take off all of the piping. And then once we take the piping off, there's just two bolts that go where the sway bar bolts are and we'll take this intercooler down. So let's get to work. Okay, so all of our intercooler piping is out. It's on the ground, some of it's there, some of it's there. There is that stock baby intercooler and everything is removed down here now. So we got our factory bolts back in where our sway bar mount goes. So we had to put the stock ones back in and we're all done down here. Most of it should be from the top, honestly, because by the time we connect it here, then we bring it around there. Same thing, this one's just gonna loop around there. So we should be able to get all this from the top put the truck back down on the ground. Only one I didn't get off is this one, which uh, probably gonna have to do from the top because the band clamps on the other side from Jonathan. He put it over there, so I can't get this off without putting it back on the ground. <laughs> Let's put this thing down. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just disconnect it from here for now because I am not sure at this point where we're gonna end up. So there's actually a little burn in this, not from me, but from some sort of previous owner. And it is almost penetrated right through, but it was enough to hold boost in 10 pounds. So um, yeah, I'll take that for what it is. But I'll show you guys in a second if I can, I don't know if I can get this out through here without arcing the, see that burn mark there? It's not from me, I promise. Yeah, so look at that burn mark from previous owner from it touching whatever header setup they had, so. One more pipe is off, and now comes the fun part of us figuring out how to get from A all the way to B. And if you guys haven't seen this, I bought a cheap $80 intercooler piping kit, all three inch stuff. I know, I know, it's eBay stuff. This we still have to put on, but it's got um, the nice silicone couplings. I don't know how many ply that is, but it's quite a few. And then we also have the T-bolt style clamps, so we won't have to worry about Jonathan and his loosening clamps anymore. We'll have all nice T-bolt ones on there. But um, yeah, they just come in like this, so like 180 degrees, and I think, no, it's not 45. Is that 45? Yeah, I guess the 45. And then just a bunch of different ones, another 45. We got a couple straights, so it's up to us to figure this out, cut it to where we want. I might use a combination of this piping and this, since some of those are some little more intricate uh, bends, so we'll see if any of that stuff works, um, because those have the beads on both ends. Once they start cutting this stuff, since we don't have a welder, we can't run an extra bead. If we had a welder, some guys will you know cut it where they want, and then they'll just run a, a you know, in this case, an aluminum bead around the edge just to create or mimic that so your clamp doesn't slide off, but uh, we'll get it done. Let's see what we come up with. First things first, we will take off this rubber cap to keep our intercooler clean so it's all sealed off from the factory. And I think what is gonna happen is some sort of 45 degree coupling is gonna go in there. So I know we got some with the kit, these nice ones, and then we have some with the Pro Charger kit for now, but I think it's gonna have to be something along that nature, but we might have to trim quite a bit because we don't want it to be way the heck out here, right? So we might have to trim off some of that so that we can get it to go that way. This one's gonna be a bit more interesting. I'm thinking if I can point it down that way. So same thing, we might trim it back, but then point it down in this way to try to get it to go out that hole through there under the battery box. So let me mess around with it and I'll see what I come up with. Ok, 
Okay, so just wanna update you guys. I've honestly been messing with this for longer than I wanna admit, but part of the thing that I'm starting to realize is I've done, this isn't the first time I've done this, just to let you guys know, I did this a long time ago um, with intercooler piping on uh, S2000 I had that made about 700 horsepower. But what we did was you take intercooler piping such as this with all the various bends and you cut where you need and you weld it together as such. But the way we're working with right now, like you don't want 5 million couplings everywhere because it just creates more failure points. So I'm trying to rationalize, you know, do I cut this piping up or do I kind of utilize what we have just to get the job done? And then once we have an aluminum welder, which is honestly what I want to get here soon, is we can start cutting it and make it more proper. Other thing too is, like I mentioned before, I don't think the supercharger is gonna be on here for a whole lot of time. So to cut all of this piping when it's not, you know, we're gonna have more connections than necessary, I don't wanna do it that way. Apparently there's some sort of helicopter over top of us. But this is what I came up with. So for this side, we are done. The other side is another nightmare. So this is the way this looks right now. And as you can tell, this is the silver Pro Charger piping that came with the kit. And I have this, if you guys can see this, it's uh, 180 degree rubber coupling. So it goes through there and comes back around. And part of the thing I wanna do say is, I don't want big couplings like that. Ideally, if I could make this bend and then weld in another bend that went around here, that would be the more ideal situation and just a simple 90 or a straight coupling here. But like I said, we can't weld different angles together and so we're relying on couplings and the fixed angles that we have to get it done. So I think this is okay, but part of the thing I was starting to say is I don't necessarily want huge couplings like this in an ideal situation because these expand and contract a lot. So you wanna use as much hard piping as you can, but this is already better than the previous setup and it comes around to here, fits nicely, and I haven't put any, any of the clamps. So this side is technically you know good to go. Where we start to run into issues is on this side and not so much intercore issues, it's just we have more room over there and then we get to this big honking battery. So what I'm fighting with right now is trying to figure out a way to get either under there, but then once we get into that area, and this is kind of a weird angle, right? Like you're almost talking about doing more than 90 degrees, but heading in a strange direction. You could probably get there if you could do pie cuts, like I said, and weld them all together. But when you're dealing with 90s, 45s, and, and 180 degree bends and trying to cut them to get this to work, um, I was trying to see if I could angle this down there and uh, you know get this to work one way or another. I still might be able to achieve that, but if not, we have a clear shot that way if the battery and battery tray wasn't there. It would be an identical situation to this, a 90 straight back and it would be simple as pie. Like it would just go straight through here and then it would connect here and we would be done. Also the blow off valve is gonna be over there now. So that is what I'm struggling with right now. I'm gonna keep messing with it because I really, really don't wanna move the battery right now. I just wanna get the truck running but it seems like every time there's something new we have to tackle. So. Let me mess up this a bit more and I'll see if I can figure out a way to get this side solved. That side should be okay for now with the exception of putting on clamps, but let me see what I come up on this side. Okay boys, I am happy to let you guys know that I'm making some progress without having to move the battery. So not that I'm trying to avoid doing that while well, I am kind of just right now. I just want to get this thing running you guys and I don't want to be waiting or on hold for more parts, which would be if we're gonna go to the track and we do a battery relocation kit, they're gonna want a kill switch on the back of the truck and it's just more stuff and we just need to get this thing to the track. So that's why I'm like trying my hardest not to remove this battery and it's not the prettiest solution and I do wanna rework it at some point but it's at least gonna get the truck running. So I am so close to achieving what I'm trying to do. So I borrowed the uh, 90 degree silicone coupling that I had for there. And I just tried it over here since I had trimmed it. You guys saw, and I think I mentioned it at one point, but I trimmed off a good, I don't know, inch and a half off of it so that it would make this corner tighter. So it works perfectly here, but I just stole it over here just to try it out. And it's 
making it just barely. It kind of is crushing it a little bit, but not collapsing it uh, completely. I just put a regular band clamp on there just to kind of get things situated. So the way I have it, hopefully this shows up in the camera, it goes through there on an angle. I have a straight piece right here, which then comes out and it goes to a coupling. And then it goes underneath the power steering, loops around to there. And then I'm still trying to figure out this last piece of the puzzle to get it back over to here. It's almost like if I didn't put that blow up out piece there, we would be on the money, but cause you can kind of see how that would pretty much work. But I'm playing with this last piece, but I'm sure I can get it between all these extra pieces or even if I have to sacrifice one of these black eBay ones and it's not like it's a fancy pipe, but you know, I'm just trying uh, to get this thing together without having to cut a bunch of stuff and more work at this point. Like I said, let's just get it together. We'll worry about getting fancy later. And ultimately the battery is gonna have to get relocated, but it's just not something that I wanna tackle right now until we figure out what we're doing. Because at some point we're gonna have to rework all this piping if we end up going turbo kit afterwards once we max out this. So as long as we get everything plumbed for now, guys, we'll be okay. So let me mess with this a bit more and I'll report back as soon as I get somewhere with it. Progress guys, progress. So we got the front connected. It connects down to there. And that pipe from Pro Charger actually wraps perfectly over and out of the way of the exhaust this time. And then I have that coupling there. It's gonna come to there, but the one thing I need to cut is a 90 degree. So I need to make a short 90 to fit in there so I can put a coupling up top and on the bottom and it's gonna have to come out of this. So we're gonna cut a small 90 out of here and then we should be rocking and rolling. So let's get done. All right, so we got all of our things on. I'm gonna wait till the morning, get the clamps on and get that blow off valve on. So I'll see you guys in the morning. I gotta hit the gym. All right, so it's the next day and what we're gonna tackle right now is getting the rest of these clamps on and getting them tightened. And also, I don't know if I've talked too much about this, but this ugly thing here is for our blow off valve. So that is the V-band clamp fitting. I just went ahead and bought this thing. This thing was like 20 bucks. I can link it for you guys down below if you'd want like, but it's just a three inch pipe and it has the fitting already welded onto it. Like I was mentioning, what I do ultimately wanna do and what we're gonna start to do on this channel is fabricate some stuff. Um, I'm eager to learn. I haven't done too much welding. I've messed around with it a tiny, tiny bit, but definitely uh, by no means any sort of expert or really, I still gotta dig into it and learn it. But I would like to have that welded. Like ideally, if you had the pipe, you know, as few connections as possible, as far as rubber couplings, and then if this pipe did one solid there and this was actually welded on the whole pipe instead of two connections, that's ideally what we want. It looks better, there's less failure points, and that's what we're gonna go for. So. Eventually we'll do that, but for now, this is the uglier, more simple solution. And um, let me get all these clamps on here, tighten them, and then I'll also get that blow-off valve on there and show you guys how that's gonna work. And I think we might have a belt. So a few more things going on today before this video wraps up. All right, one little update thing. So I got our band down there, band clamp, and I am going to use this. I found this, I had it from an old project. 
like long, long ago, like S2000 turbocharged project, which you guys probably don't even know about on the channel. We had a 700 horsepower S2000 way back in the day. Um, but this is a heat sleeve. It's kind of long, but I was thinking about throwing it around that piping. I don't know if I want to cut this because I might use it for something more purposeful in the future, but I don't know. Debating throwing it around there, but it's actually like a mile long and I don't think I want to cut this. At first I was thinking I would put this around there just to keep any heat off the headers from, you know, transferring into this. It's not close enough where it's going to melt, but I don't know. On second thought, it's kind of long, so I don't know if I'm going to use it for that. I don't want to cut this thing and it's only going to be a temporary solution because eventually I want the intercooler piping to come here when we move the battery in the future. So let's keep plugging away, get a couple more clamps on and we're almost ready boys. So let's get this done. All right, everything over here is super solid and tight. I just got to put the blow up valve on, but before we do that, I am tight all the way around on that side over here. I'm just going to tighten up all these ones. I still got to put a band clamp here. Okay, so we managed to get everything on. She's tight and I just need to clean up this mess. This is like carnage from us doing all the piping everywhere. And if you guys know me, I like a clean workspace. It just makes me be able to think better. So I'm gonna do a quick cleanup and then we'll move on to the blow off valve. So I tighten the fitting that we have on there. And then over here, if you recall, we have this brass barb right there. I'm gonna remove that. I'm also gonna put a push to connect fitting on this side. So I'll remove that, we'll put in the push to connect. And before our brass barb with just our rubber hose went around to that uh, pro charger blow off valve or bypass valve. And now it's gonna go from here to there. So we have a shorter path too. So let's plumb it in. All right, fitting is in. I actually had to remove the idle air control valve because it gets really close on this corner because you kind of have to modify it. I just trimmed the ears off on the end of the idle air control valve just so that it clearances it because the ear on the end was touching there. And I had a problem when I had the last little brass barb in there too, but I barely got it in, but this time I couldn't, couldn't cheat it. So anyways, let's put this back in. Okay, next up is gonna be our blow off valve right here. So we'll put this O-ring on. Hopefully she stays, this might end up proving to be a bit fun, but that has to go on and then this has to go on. So let's put it all together. All right, so we got the blow off valve installed. Everything's sturdy. Next is just to make a line from here to our throttle body right there. So we'll cut it to length and that's it. We'll just push it together. So very straightforward guys. I love this stuff. You literally just push it in. That's it for there. I think we'll probably go underneath this and then we just plug it in. That's as easy as that. I'm going to go underneath this one though. Boom. Done. So we have a connection from here to our throttle body now and that's it. Okay guys, so all the intercooler piping is plumbed. We are good to go now. There's a couple that I would like to do a little bit differently, but for now, temporarily, it should do what we want it to do. Like I was mentioning, I think a few times throughout this video, ideally, and I think eventually, we need to relocate the battery. The battery should go to the back. It'll put a bit more weight in the back. And at the same time, I'll have a more direct line over here because right now, I'm not too happy with the way that coupling is, honestly but uh, it's at least connected. We made it work that way and uh, we should be okay to test this. So next step and what you guys can expect in the next videos is we have to get a different size belt. Actually, it should hopefully be here. I gotta go check the mail. The shorter belt should be here, which will bypass the AC and we can get some good tension on it. And if all goes as planned, we can go ahead and, you know, if we're gonna do some testing, and if all that works out, then we can actually hit the track hopefully next week. That's the plan, that's the goal. So keep your fingers crossed. Make sure you give this a thumbs up, guys. I know you guys are watching this, so definitely make sure to take the time to give it a thumbs up. It helps the video, it helps the channel, and it helps to grow. So that's our goal. Also hit that subscribe button if you're new. We got a lot more content on the way, more stuff on this, more stuff on that. You don't wanna miss it. I'll see you on the next one.